Good afternoon, this is Jeff with Sewer Tech Northwest. We're at 1581 Bonnie Lane here in uh, Forest Grove. It's located on the right side of the house. It's as you face the house from the street, and that's how I describe everything. We're just around the corner from the front patio. And this is not one of those cleanouts you should ever lose, tr lose track of, but it sits almost perfectly in front of the first foundation vent you come to here. It's just barely offset to the right of it. Anyway, three inch ABS clean out. We're gonna check the overall condition and serviceability of the sanitary sewer line. Water is running. We're gonna zero out here at the base of the clean out. Off we go. And I'm kind of tucked into the bushes right now. I've got kind of an awkward view of the, of the uh, screen at the moment. I'll do a little bit more looking at things as we come back in, more commentary, but thus far, that is a incredibly clean sewer line right there. That's how you want your line to look. And and the, the about the one habit that keeps it that way is not putting cooking oil and grease down your line. Just transition there to four inch 3034 PVC. And I'm a big stickler on cooking oil and grease buildup. I've been doing this for about 13 years. I've cameraed about 24, 25,000 sewer lines. And I can honestly tell you, I'm more concerned about grease buildup than I am a lot of structural issues like bellies, things of that nature. What I've found is it's often, you know, some kind of, like right here, for instance, we're getting, we're getting quite a distance out from the home right now, going through some standing water. Did you notice there was zero buildup leading up to this point. And a belly that distance from the home, especially a line that's being treated properly, I would not expect to see huge levels of buildup, but that's a really good example of what I'm talking about. Not that a belly like that can't theoretically cause a problem. This is this one's situated really far from the home um, where it's in a very low likelihood scenario to ever cause a blockage. Um, I mean, if you could even get a blockage to form at that distance out there, you've got to fill up a humongous amount of pipe just to get back to the foundation wall of the house. And then probably another, you know, 10, 15 feet of pipe on the interior to get back to your first fixture. In doing so, a, a blockage made out of proper stuff like toilet paper would have an extremely hard time um, withstanding that level of head pressure. It would, it would knock loose long before it ever got back to the house. Um, but if you, if you, you know, gunk your lineup with a bunch of grease buildup and then also start flushing things like flushable wipes down the line, especially big wads of them, it's usually a combination of things like that that can ever get a belly to, to turn into a problem. Anyway, we'll take a second look at that on the way out when the line's fully drained. We're going to go locate here real quick and then we'll, we'll have a better look at everything. Alrighty, located the camera head successfully. The uh, line terminates almost perfectly in line with where the clean out's at. If you were to draw, the line obviously meanders around a little bit more than that, but overall, if you were to draw a straight, basically straight line from the clean out to the main lateral, and that's essentially the path, the overall, the route the line takes. So the belly dissipates off there right at the main lateral. The main in this case, this belly looks like it, it's probably gonna start right at the street curb. The main in this circumstance um, is only you know, maybe five, six feet off the curb. It's a very common location to get a belly. So, anyhow, I mean, that right there is all the buildup in the entire sewer line. I mean, the, the top of the pipe, the sidewalls has no buildup on it. I couldn't even rec fi recommend $5 in drain cleaning on the sewer line. Um, if, I, if I can't even recommend cleaning, I don't jump straight to let's tear a gigantic hole in the road. But that's my experience with bellies, especially in plastic pipe. They're a very different animal. If you were to take that same belly and put it in concrete pipe or cast iron with very rough pipe walls, very different animal. In plastic sewer lines like this, um, they rarely, especially when they're positioned that far away from the house, that's a belly there that comes down to just plain and simple how the line's being treated. You'd, you'd have to abuse this thing to quite an extent to get it to a point of causing a blockage. About the only scenario where I could ever foresee that resulting in a blockage capable of causing a backup is if you're loading that thing up with paper towels, wipes, 
even flushable wipes, you, they're, they're, flushable wipes are terrible. Don't put them down your sewer line. They are slightly less horrible than paper towels are. Um, and this line's got a lot of slope and grade to it too. It's, it dives at a very hard angle. Uh, you've got a lot of gravity working in your favor here. That thing is, is diving down there at about a 45 degree angle for quite a distance. So it's, it's even yet again another thing that helps keep this line moving along un, under a scenario where a blockage even does happen, which I can tell has never happened here. Um, this line does, shows no evidence of being cleaned preemptively for the sale to clean things up. If you see that little thin skiff of grease film in the flow line, that, that, that kind of stuff takes time uh, to accrue. It doesn't just happen overnight. So that's my two cents on it. The belly is too far from the home. It, you know, at, at its worst point there, it, it runs from around 45 feet to about 55 feet. Um, if it were the first, you know, eight, 10 feet right out of the gate here, right up next to the house, I would, I would recommend you fix it. At the distance that is from the home there, it's, this is one of those that just comes down to, to, to how you treat the sewer line. Um, but if you were, if you were flushing big wads of paper towels down the line, stuff that does not disintegrate properly, um, it would take something like that to ever get to a point where you could block the line up and back it all the way up to the house without that head pressure knocking things loose before it ever gets there. So if you're a household, you know, and, and what I, what I also would rather see people do, I'm not going to beat anyone up. If they do, if got a big family, they they do a lot of cooking. Um, you don't always have time to clean your pans out in ideal fashion. I'd rather see folks do a periodic hydrojet for a few hundred bucks every few years to keep build up down if they even need it. This is a household. This is a great example of a house that's been living properly. Um, and it, and it, it shows when you aren't putting abusive items down the line, you're not giving the, the line or the belly in general anything to build up. So as we sit here, we have adequate flow of the main lateral connection. All the pipe we've scoped here, even the belly, all of it's intact. Uh, the the pl plastic pipe can settle to an incredible extent without breaking. Um, but like I was saying before, if you had the same belly in an older pipe material, um, I'd feel differently about recommending a repair on that. It's, it's, a, it's a situation that is much more likely to lead to a problem. Those smooth plastic pipe walls do a, a magnificent amount to mitigate buildup and blockages from occurring. So anyway, adequate flow of the main, very clean sewer line. It is functioning properly at this time. Um, and again, the reason I'm not recommending the repair on the belly there, it is, I can't even recommend cleaning on it, um, let alone a repair in my opinion. That's my two cents on that.